For years, Moscow has tried to fix the industry that was a source of immense pride in the USSR. While it's bounced back from its post-Soviet collapse and once again become a major world player, the Russian rockets have recently suffered a series of humiliating failures. Unless a miracle happens, the Russian rocket industry may collapse soon. Find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Firstly, a lot of people have wondered why the Soviet space workhorse Soyuz still exists. The capsule claimed the life of the first astronaut to fly in it and was later involved in one of the worst accidents in spaceflight history. Yet Soyuz, an aging piece of Cold War technology, the spaceship has earned itself a remarkable reputation and has seen off far more complex, expensive craft such as the Space Shuttle, which was retired by NASA. But the future of Soyuz is in question today. Some experts believe that the craft will soon be replaced by cheaper spaceships now being developed in the U.S. by Elon Musk and other entrepreneurs. The basic design for Soyuz was established in 1962 by the Soviet rocket engineer Sergei Korolev. The craft was intended to become the spaceship that would carry Soviet cosmonauts to the moon. On November 28, 1966, an unmanned version was launched with the aim of carrying out a rendezvous with a second Soyuz to be launched the next day. However, the craft's systems failed within minutes of reaching orbit, and the mission was abandoned. A follow-up mission ended in disaster when its launcher exploded on the launch pad, killing one person. The Soviets pressed ahead, and in April 1967, the first manned Soyuz was launched, but crashed on re-entry when its descent capsule's parachute failed to open, killing the only crewman, Vladimir Komarov. Flights resumed 18 months later, and Soyuz eventually entered regular service, though by then the Soviets were lagging behind America in the race to the moon. Nevertheless, they were still able to come up with one startling mission using a version of Soyuz called Zond 5. Zond 5 flew in September 1968. After its success, cosmonaut Alexei Leonov pressed to follow immediately on a similar mission, to circle the moon and return to Earth and so beat America, which was planning its own circumlunar mission, Apollo 8, in December. Leonov was refused permission, and so America got to the moon first, though they did not land until Apollo 11 touched down in July of 1969, added Baker. At the end of the day, the Russians were just more cautious. After losing the race to the moon, Russia concentrated on Earth orbit missions and the construction of manned space stations. Soyuz became the workhorse for those missions, though it suffered one more tragic failure when the three crew members on board Soyuz 11, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Posadzpiv, were killed in 1971 when their capsule depressurized abruptly as they prepared to re-enter the atmosphere. They are the only deaths of humans to have occurred in space. All other spaceflight fatalities have happened inside the Earth's atmosphere. Since then, Soyuz has earned itself a reputation for safety and reliability, though its descent to Earth, said Charmin, remains a dramatic experience. The G-Force is five times normal gravity. You can see the part of the spaceship's outer shell which starts to glow as it heats up as it plunges into the atmosphere and bits start to burn off. Then when the parachute opens, you get jerked from side to side. It's a lumpy and bumpy ride. For all its discomforts, this still is the form of manned spacecraft that's prevailed over the decades until the SpaceX trampoline started working more efficiently. Especially Soyuz prospects have now been severely diminished in the fallout from Russia's war in Ukraine. The nation moves to rework commercial contracts, halt deliveries, and effectively seize property from Western customers, and it's shaken the industry's faith in Russia and its signature rocket. The Russian government just killed the commercial potential of Soyuz, says Caleb Henry, a senior analyst at Quality Analytics, a research and advisory firm. Russia's action threatens to permanently remove Soyuz from the list of globally used launch vehicles. Besides, there's many concerns about reliance on Germany to help fuel the Soyuz rocket and the Soyuz spacecraft that launches humans. The issue is that vernier thrust on the Soyuz boosters and the deorbit engines of the Soyuz MS spacecraft use a special grade of highly refined hydrogen peroxide. Production of this hydrogen peroxide in Russia, however, depends on deliveries of chemicals produced by a German company called Evonik Resource Efficiency GmbH. These deliveries are subject to limitations by international sanctions against the Russian Federation. That is, 
the West can stop Russian space launches with a single keystroke. On its side, Roscosmos stopped selling rocket engines to the U.S. Sadly, things didn't turn out the way Rogozin thought. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall said U.S. national security launches will not be affected by Russia's decision. Well, that's because they have SpaceX. SpaceX designed and manufactured their own rocket engines. What's more, they built the first methane engine to ever fly. Yep, we're talking about the Raptor engine. At the rate of producing an engine per day, SpaceX not only has enough engines to power its own rockets, it can supply other parties. Therefore, Russia's decision makes no sense to the U.S. On the contrary, Russian space itself depends on rocket engine supplies to the U.S. And that decision to stop selling has caused the already narrow source of income to become exhausted. The industry, which has been deeply hurt by Western sanctions, is now becoming more and more difficult because of increasingly drying up financial resources. So how Soyuz will go into such a future with no foreign funds as before? Well, hopefully it won't be too dire. Poor Russia. Not only Soyuz, but Angara A5, Russia's replacement for the venerable Proton rocket, is even another big disaster. The long-running development program has been slow. The Angara A5 finally made debut in 2014, successfully lofting a two-ton mass simulator into geosynchronous orbit. But then six years passed before a second development flight happened in December 2020. The flight was again successful, with the rocket putting 2.4 tons of a mass simulator into orbit. But why so long between flights? Cost, production issues, and a lack of demand all are factors. Although the Russian government has not been forthcoming, the expense of building the Angara A5 was probably the biggest factor. The Russian space program had hoped to make the Angara A5 competitive with SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket for commercial launch. But Russian media reported that Angara production costs to date are about $100 million per vehicle. In December 2021, the Angara A5 rocket appeared ready to get back on track as technicians prepared it for a third and final development flight. After the Per Se upper stage and the mass simulator were deployed, the RD-0124 engine performed a nominal initial burn, but a second burn to put the payload into a higher stable orbit failed. Russian observers of the industry continue to mistrust these official statements. Angara has no chance of successful competition, says Andrei Ionin, a member of the Russian Academy of Cosmonautics. Of Russia's plan to reduce the cost of the Angora 5 rocket, Ionin said, this is an attempt to bombard real facts with informational garbage. He doesn't believe the rocket can ever be competitive with the reusable Falcon 9 rocket. The reality seems to be that Russia's new rocket costs substantially more than the rocket it's replacing, the Proton. This comes at a time when international prize competition, led by SpaceX but joined by Japan's H3 and Europe's Ariane 6 booster, is hotter than ever. Now that Dmitry rogozin has been dismissed, the current Deputy Prime Minister for Space and Defense, Yuri Borisov, has been named his replacement. No one knows what sort of director Roscosmos Borisov will be, and honestly, it's too difficult to save Russian rockets at this point. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section because your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.